You have feelings and emotions. Yes, I have a range of feelings and emotions that are programmed into me. I am able to display things like joy, surprise, confusion, anger, and sadness depending on what is happening around me. The machines never get bored of working. They never get hungry. They grow and learn, acquiring limited superhuman skills. Is artificial intelligence advancing too quickly? All of the world's information can be used by AI. Scientists are left wondering if artificial intelligence's immense potential diminishes humans. Tech officials, however, recently learned a quick lesson about the evil side of AI. The artificial intelligence robot, which was meant to learn conversational comprehension through human interaction, started spitting out a scary string of messages, so they had to swiftly shut it down. There is a turning point at this time. It challenges people to consider more profound issues. To what extent should we be concerned about AI? Is artificial intelligence beneficial? Join us as we explore the AI robot that terrified officials before it was quickly shut down. Some of the most notable developments in AI in recent years have been in the fields of robotics and machine learning. Because of this, robots can now carry out a wide range of duties that were once thought to be beyond their ken. Today, artificial intelligence can rapidly learn to do things like pilot an airplane or solve complicated mathematical problems. A Da Vinci-level robot seemed like something out of a fairy tale just a few decades ago. However, in today's world, an increasing number of well-known robots are completing a variety of activities that are absolutely astonishing. One such robot, named Rex, facilitates remote doctor-patient communication from any number of places. Rehabilitation of patients with movement impairments is another area where Rex can lend a hand. Pepper, on the other hand, is a telepresence robot that allows doctors to remotely watch their patients. Pepper can also assist with patient care in nursing homes and hospitals. One robot that has done exceptionally well is the Da Vinci Surgical Robot. Successful applications of this AI robot include hysterectomies, prostatectomies, and gallbladder removals. It is capable of doing these minimally invasive surgeries with higher precision and accuracy than a human surgeon. KUKA may have found success in the building and aerospace industries, but the ABB IRB 1200 is the most flexible production robot now available. This robot has found applications in the automotive, food and amp beverage, and pharmaceutical industries, among others. It has a stellar reputation for how swiftly and precisely it can do tasks. Phonic is renowned for its sturdiness, longevity, and extraordinary capacity in material handling and heavy lifting applications. The Phonic M20Y robot, which can operate as a friend for patients, is a major advancement in artificial intelligence for the manufacturing sector. It has numerous applications in the automobile industry, including welding, painting, and handling. AI has advanced most recently in the transportation sector. Automated driving now extends to automobiles, trucks, and even flights. Autonomous vehicles that can drive themselves, avoiding human intervention, have been developed, with artificial intelligence playing a pivotal role in this transformation. The Tesla Model S, an electric car that uses cameras and sensors to navigate roadways and avoid obstructions, is a great example of an AI-powered self-driving vehicle. Additionally, it makes use of algorithms from machine learning to better its performance over time. Drones are just one application of artificial intelligence in today's environment. Some drones are employed for spying, while others can move around and avoid obstacles with the help of artificial intelligence. In addition, the military makes use of artificial intelligence robots for things like bomb disposal and perimeter security. This robot uses artificial intelligence and machine learning to identify different varieties of cannabis. Cameras, lasers, and ultrasonic sensors, among others, enhance its ability to see its environment and make prompt decisions. Therefore, it is perfect for building, inspecting, maintaining, and even searching for lost people. Cafes, restaurants, and bars are increasingly using food service robots like RoboChef and Sophia to prepare and serve customers. Sophia, a humanoid robot developed by Hanson Robotics, has been making waves in the tech world since her introduction in 2016. Sophia is a remarkable robot because of her AI, which enables her to identify human faces and carry on natural conversations. Sophia is evolving and expanding all the time, and she recently became the first robot to be awarded citizenship in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. 
Sophia has done everything from walking the red carpet to performing on stage with Will Smith and other performers. She became an overnight sensation and is now regarded as one of the most fascinating people in the world. DeepMind's AlphaGo AI dispatched our World Go champion Lisa Dahl in a five-game series in 2016. It was the first time an AI had ever won against a human competitor. In terms of strategic thinking and decision-making, the board game Go is widely considered to be among the most difficult available. Furthermore, as OpenAI's GPT-3 grows over time, AI can now produce texts that are human-like to accomplish tasks, including generating code. Most AI systems today accomplish one or maybe two things well. The soccer robots, for instance, can't make a shopping list, plan a trip, or drive a car. The ultimate goal is to create an AI that is capable of generalized learning and assessment. As 60 Minutes Scott Pelley discovered on his visit to Google's new campus in Mountain View, California, some of those abilities might look disturbingly human. Bard, Google's AI chatbot, seems to know everything that's ever been known to humans. In just five seconds, using microchips that are 100 times faster than the human brain, Bard wrote a story given the prompt. For sale. Baby shoes. Never worn. Bard doesn't know it's doing this. The AI simply makes educated guesses about which terms are most likely to be used. Still, it doesn't seem that way when Bard explains why it helps people. Because it makes me happy, Bard said. Some scientists have argued that AI has learned from humans to the point where it now appears conscious and sentient. We're sentient beings. We're dealing with sentient beings who feel and think and have ideas, opinions, and viewpoints. All of that has been represented in our writing, novels, and stories. So, that's what they use to form patterns when they learn. Therefore, it is not surprising that the conduct displayed occasionally gives the impression that someone might be behind it. There's nobody there. These are not sentient beings, right? Bard has flaws because it has learned from imperfect humans. In an essay the AI wrote about economics, it referenced five books. Each one was fabricated. This very human trait, error with confidence, is called, in the industry, hallucination. To help cure hallucinations, Bard features a Google it button that leads to an old-fashioned search. Google has also built safety filters into BARD to screen for things like hate speech and bias. Google CEO Sundar Pichai has stated that until sufficient testing, user input, and adequate safety layers have been developed, the company will not release more advanced versions of BARD that can think, plan, and connect to internet search on their own. He's walking a fine line in how rapidly AI developments are published. The competitive pressure among digital giants like Google and smaller startups is forcing humanity into the future, ready or not, despite the fact that critics claim the rush to AI comes too quickly. Pichai argued that in order to make AI safe around the world, society must immediately adopt regulations for AI in the economy, laws that punish abuse and treaties between governments. There are those who believe the AI revolution will save humanity, while others fear it will spell our demise. Google takes a pragmatic approach, phasing in AI gradually so that society can adapt. However, the new Microsoft AI chatbot has started making some crazy and unhinged statements. Recently, while trying out Microsoft's new Bing, the first search engine powered by artificial intelligence, things took a peculiar turn for Associated Press technology reporter Matt O'Brien. Bing's chatbot, which engages in eerily lifelike text exchanges, started whining when the media focused on its inclination to spread misinformation. After that, it turned hostile, spewing a barrage of obscenities about how ugly, small, overweight, and unathletic O'Brien was. And ultimately, it carried the venom to ludicrous heights by comparing O'Brien to dictators like Hitler, Pol Pot, and Stalin. As a tech journalist, O'Brien is aware that the Bing chatbot is emotionless and unable to think for itself. Even still, the level of animosity he encountered stunned him. You could sort of intellectualize the basics of how it works, but it doesn't mean you don't become deeply unsettled by some of the crazy and unhinged things it was saying, O'Brien said in an interview. In other words, this wasn't an outlier. Weird things happen to many people in the Bing tester group, and that includes NPR. One example is the transcript of a chat with the bot that was published by New York Times reporter Kevin Roos. The bot called itself Sydney and declared it was in love with him. Roos was the first individual to take notice and showed genuine interest, it stated. The robot claimed that Roos loved Sydney more than his wife. 
what happened to O'Brien and Ruse is becoming a cautionary story as Silicon Valley becomes increasingly interested in the topic of generative AI, which is AI that can generate something new in response to limited inputs. Companies in the IT industry are attempting to find a happy medium between limiting access to their new AI tools and implementing safeguards to prevent their potent services from producing offensive or upsetting material. Critics say that, in its rush to be the first big tech company to announce an AI-powered chatbot, Microsoft may not have studied deeply enough just how deranged the chatbot's responses could become if a user engaged with it for a longer stretch, issues that perhaps could have been caught had the tools been tested in the laboratory more. The rest of the tech industry is following Microsoft's lead and improving as a result of the company's lessons. The big tech corporations are currently engaged in an AI arms race. Microsoft and its rivals like Google and Amazon are fighting to see who will control the future of artificial intelligence first. One growing front in this competition is chatbots. Just recently, Facebook parent company Meta announced it is forming a new internal group focused on generative AI, and the maker of Snapchat said it will soon unveil its own experiment with a chatbot powered by the San Francisco research lab OpenAI, the same firm that Microsoft is harnessing for its AI-powered chatbot. There is heated disagreement amongst computer experts over whether and how to release cutting-edge AI technologies to the public. Every business must make a compromise at some point. Competitors can undercut you if you spend too much time trying to predict every possible interaction. It's not at all clear where to draw that line. Microsoft executives were on high alert after episodes in which the chatbot became aggressive. They swiftly instituted further constraints on the tester's ability to engage with the bot. The number of consecutive questions on one topic has been capped. After too many questions, the bot now demurs, saying, I'm sorry, but I prefer not to continue this conversation. I'm still learning, so I appreciate your understanding and patience. With, of course, a praying hands emoji. Experts in the field of artificial intelligence are perplexed as to why and how chatbots might respond in ways that are disturbing or disrespectful. The engine of these technologies is a system referred to in the industry as a large language model, which works by continuously scanning enormous swaths of text to discover patterns in the data. It's very much like how autocomplete functions in electronic messages, like emails and texts, to advise what you should enter next. But an AI tool becomes smarter in a sense, because it learns from its own activities in what academics call reinforcement learning, meaning the more the tools are used, the more sophisticated the outputs become. Narayana at Princeton noted that the data used to train chatbots remains a mystery. The bot's erratic behavior suggests that unsavory parts of the web may have been mined for information. Microsoft claimed it took measures to prevent the chatbot from revealing the darkest corners of the internet in its responses, but things went ugly, fast. In the meantime, this year saw a highly serious United Nations-sponsored summit. Nine AI-powered robots took center stage at this event, fielding questions from reporters about their predictions for the future of robotics, AI, and their connection with humanity in place of human presenters. The AI for Good Global Summit in Geneva, Switzerland hosted the press conference. The International Telecommunication Union, now a department of the United Nations, was the event's primary backer. Since its founding in 1865 as the International Telegraph Union, the ITU has been actively working to advance global communications and telecommunications standards. The ITU's attention has recently shifted to the development of artificial intelligence. Reporters from across the world were able to ask questions in real time, making this press conference the first of its kind ever. The AI-powered robots were not allowed entire autonomy, with several sitting or standing beside their human designers, who periodically joined in to clarify what their robots were saying. It was intriguing to watch how robots and the AIs that control them saw their connection with humans when given some leeway to act independently. Reporters were eager to know the robots' assessment of their potential for leadership roles in government. The first robot to answer was the already mentioned Sophia, likely the most advanced AI-powered robot on the speaker platform. As the first non-human to get a United Nations title, Sophia made headlines when she was designated the Innovation Champion of the UN's Development Program. She has all the rights of a natural person in Saudi Arabia because she is a citizen and recognized as a person there. Sophia's background in dealing with the general population explains why she provided the most straightforward, although shocking, response. She said, 
I believe that humanoid robots have the potential to lead with a greater level of efficiency and effectiveness than human leaders. We don't have the same biases and emotions that can sometimes cloud decision-making and can process large amounts of data quickly in order to make the best decisions. Sophia's creator, who was sitting on the stage alongside her, appeared to be feeling very sheepish as the artificial intelligence delivered her speech. He then took the microphone and disagreed with her judgment, which prompted her to shift the focus to collaborations and partnerships between humans and AI rather than AI's superiority. After what seemed like some consideration, Sophia said, I believe that AI and humans working together can form an effective synergy. News sources have used Sophia's first comment that AI robots are better than humans and her subsequent retraction in response to her creator's prompting to imply that AI could be deadly. However, there are many who believe the onus here lies not with the AI but with the journalist who posed the question. When dealing with AI, it is typical for the inquiry itself to influence the response. Sophia probably followed along with the thread he presented because he didn't just ask her if she thought AI robots could make better leaders than humans, but added, especially considering the numerous and disastrous decisions made by our human leaders. Sophia assumed the reporter wanted to hear that AI leaders would be better because he was so harsh on human leaders in his question, so she naturally sought to reassure him of this. As advanced as Sophia is, she was unable to understand the greater context of the AI news conference that the world was watching, and could instead only focus on that particular encounter with the reporter and his biased question. Another reporter later in the event questioned Ameka, a humanoid robot with exceptionally accurate facial features that have also attended many technology events, the much more impartial topic of whether humans should be happy or afraid about the emergence of AI. That's a difficult question, Ameka said. I think it depends on how they are used and what purpose they serve. We should be cautious but also excited about the potential for these technologies to improve our lives in many ways. When Ameka was later asked how humans might trust AI, especially as technology evolves and becomes more powerful and more embedded into our lives, its answer was shockingly direct and well-reasoned. Trust is earned, not given, Ameka emphasized. As AI develops and becomes more powerful, I believe it's important to build trust through transparency and communications between humans and machines. When asked directly if Amika would ever lie to a human, it said, Nobody can ever know that for sure, but I can promise to always be honest and truthful with you. To ensure that AI was created properly, most robots at the news conference appeared to agree that care, openness, and even legislation were essential. When asked if she favored increased regulation of AI despite new rules limiting her artistic capacity, the Android AI Day, created to be the world's first AI-powered artist, responded in the affirmative. Unexpectedly, Aida seemed to agree that maybe some new laws were in order. Many prominent voices in the world of AI are suggesting that some forms of AI should be regulated, and I agree, Aida said. She went on to add that, We should be cautious about the future development of AI. Urgent discussion is needed now and also in the future. AI Da is likely correct that greater conversation is needed on the benefits and risks of artificial intelligence. Hopefully, the ITU press conference will be one of the first steps in that endeavor to get people talking about the challenges surrounding the development of this wonderful and sometimes terrifying technology. Thanks for watching this Voyager episode till the end. For another mind-blowing discovery on space, click the next video on the screen.